The topic of our conversation tonight is, of course, one of the nicest places towards Israel in the world, and I, of course, refer to your territory, the United Nations. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, in his recent speech at the UN, spoke about the fact that the world is changing, and many more countries today see Israel as their partner, as part of the solution and not part of the problem. Do you see these kind of changes also at your court? First of all, I'm very happy to be here tonight. I'm not used to see so many friendly faces at the UN. It's very impressive, you know, being here watching so many friends of Israel, Yishar Koach for the IEC, Sheldon, Miri, Chaim. It's amazing to see so much love, unconditional support for Israel. Maybe you will come back with me tomorrow morning to New York. We'll need you in the UN. But I'm optimistic, Gil. I'm optimistic about what's happening today at the UN, because in the UN you have the public UN, the regular Israel bashing, 22 resolutions against Israel, and you have the private UN. And privately, I will meet Arab ambassadors quietly. We will speak about the future. We will speak about what will happen with Iran, radical Islam. And we are doing a lot of things quietly. And my challenge is to close that gap between the private UN and the public. And I tell some of the ambassadors, why don't we do it publicly? So I was in Dubai uh, two years ago, and they asked me to keep it quiet. And I respected it. And a few weeks ago, Prime Minister Netanyahu traveled and visited uh, an Arab country. And we saw more ministers visiting Arab countries. So it's changing. And I will tell you a short story. I decided to run for the position of the chairman of the legal committee. My colleagues in Jerusalem called me, told me, Danny, you are crazy. It's not the Knesset. We are not running for positions that the UN take it easy. I tell them, don't worry. And when we went to collect the votes, at the end, after the Palestinians worked against me, and they had a meeting of all the Muslim countries. Do you know how many Muslim countries we have at the UN? Anyone? 56 Muslim countries out of 193. They had a meeting of all the Muslim countries, the OIC, Organization of Islamic Countries, together. So whenever they have a meeting of the Islamic countries, I call for a meeting of all the Jewish countries. And I, I sit by myself in the delegates' lounge, and they decided to vote against me. But when we counted the votes, Gil, I received the support, and it was secret ballots, I received the support of 109 member states, and only 44 voted against Israel. Thank you. And, and today, you do the math yourself. The 44 voted against me, exactly. and you have 56 so Muslims. Exactly. They are looking for the dozen ambassadors <laughs> who voted with Israel until today. From so Muslim countries. Danny, but we usually talk about Israel and the UN in the context of confrontation. But in recent years, and we just had Maurice Khan here on stage, there is more and more cooperation. The UN is enjoying Israeli technology, Israeli innovations. Take us, please, to this world of cooperation that usually, in the news, we are, do not report on. I believe that with our technology and innovation, we can change the world. And we all believe in, in Tikkun Olam. And we are implementing it. I will tell you a story. And it's only between us tonight, Gil. We are here alone on stage. I'm helping Israeli companies to sell products to the UN. It can be military, peacekeeping, medical, everything which is Kaholavan, blue and white, I support. And it's happening. It's happening. So I met one of the officials of the UN. And we were trying to sell to the UN a UAV, an Israeli drone. And he was very honest. He told me, Danny, if we will buy the Israeli drone, it will be huge headlines, it will be a headache for me. I can buy, I can buy the Italian drone, and he showed me the Italian drone. So you see, I will buy that, nothing will happen. So I, I told him, Mr. X, this drone that you just showed me, the Italian one, you know that the engine of the drone is from Bet Shemesh. And the camera of the drone is from Igdala Emek. And the wings are from Haifa, so why don't you buy it from us? And that's what happened at the end. So we are optimistic that with our innovation and technology, we can help the UN and we can help many countries, many developing countries. Danny, now that Nikki Haley is leaving her post at the UN as the US ambassador to the UN, do you think that you, Danny Danone, 
is going to work much harder because without Nikki, it's not going to be the same. Absolutely not. Ambassador Haley, she's a great friend of Israel, uh, and we love her, and we appreciate all the great work she did in the last two years. And I'm sure that in the future, she will continue to support Israel, and uh, we will have the support of the U.S. no matter what. President Trump will nominate a new ambassador in the near future, and we'll continue to work Any guess? Who is it going to be? No. You know, it's President Trump. You, you have to wait until the last <laughs> minute. But Maybe I, I, we can ask Sheldon. Maybe he has some information. I can tell you it will be a great ambassador that will support Israel. And when I took Ambassador Haley uh, last June to Israel, it was her first visit to Israel. And we took an army helicopter, and I showed her everything from south to north. And you know it, I'm sometimes I, I push too much. So I told her, Here, you're push, pushing Nikki, me. Look over there. <laughs> this is the border with Lebanon. This is the border of Jordan, Syria. She told me, Danny, speak. Enough. Enough. Don't show me the border. I can see. Wherever it's green, it's Israel. Wherever it's gray, it's not Israel. So she gets it. And uh, we are doing a lot, and she's living only at the end of the year. And now we are working on a very important resolution condemning Hamas in the General Assembly. It will come to a vote. Yes, it's a, it's a crucial vote coming up on Thursday. Hamas, the terrorist organization, who is holding the bodies of uh, Oron Shaul and Adar Goldin. The UN must condemn them. I cannot understand how a member state of the UN will not vote against Hamas. Danny, I would like to tell you that here with us tonight is the families of Goldin and Shaul, and always, always in our minds, in our thoughts and prayers are also the Mengistu family. Do you expect that in the wording of the UN resolution that the United States is putting forward, there will be a clear demand to the return of the bodies and of Mengistu? We, we are working on that with the Americans, and we hope that we will get the support of many countries. It's not easy because it's in the General Assembly, but I think it's the moral thing to do, to condemn Hamas and to demand that the boys will come back home. And two days ago, the UN received a letter from Ismail and Nia. The leader of the Hamas wrote a letter to the UN member states and to the President of the General Assembly demanding that the resolution will not come to a vote. Can you imagine a terrorist organization approaching the UN? It's like a serial killer approaching the police. But why it is so important that the General Assembly, because the United States usually is passing resolutions at the Security Council, why is it so important that the General Assembly of the United Nations will decide and have such a resolution regarding Hamas? We believe that the best defense is offense. And uh, Ambassador Haley and myself are proving it. So usually when you come to the General Assembly, it's only resolutions against Israel. And uh, by the way, when you had a beautiful speech of Vice President Pence here, and uh, I followed it, it was an amazing speech. I was in New York, and the resolution that passed in the General Assembly denying the connection of Jews to Jerusalem, this is a joke. It was a shameful resolution passed in the General Assembly. So we are proving to the world that in the UN, it's not only against Israel. We're trying to bring some moral clarity into the hold of this building, and, and we are succeeding to do it. Danny Danon, Israel Ambassador to the United Nations, to Daraba. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hanukkah And I will sign off, as I always do, with Gil Tamari, Florida. Leitraot. Tamshikhu lachgog velenot.